I was out and about like a shopping queen again, got myself a new home server. And in this video, I want to show you why you should also get such a home server and what you can do with it. We'll start after the intro. Enjoy. First of all, the um, advantages of such a computer and why you should get something like this as an alternative. Alternatively, in my opinion, there is, of course, the Raspberry Pi, which in recent years has been the be-all and end-all and was recommended by almost everyone for every small project. However, these parts don't have particularly high performance, are currently, actually, more expensive than these thin clients, have similar power consumption, but offer less performance. And above all, use an SD card. Whereas these thin clients even support a PCI NVMe SSD, allowing for significantly higher storage capacities and much faster speeds. Additionally, you have a regular x86 processor instead of these mobile ARM processors which definitely provides you with significantly greater support for operating systems. Of course, you could also configure a new computer, which would then have even more performance. However, this would obviously exceed a significant budget tight. And in terms of power consumption, we would no longer be on the economical side. We would have significantly more performance available. But the question you have to ask yourself is, what do I actually want to run on such a work 24 seven operating computer? If it's about Home Assistant, Plex, or other services, then we actually don't need that much performance and are much better off with such a small, inexpensive device, especially since it runs 24 seven and can significantly increase electricity costs. In my opinion, a smart home should at least be on the same level in terms of power consumption as a non-smart home. So we should accordingly look at where we can save energy so that we can operate a smart room server without increasing power consumption. And at the same time, we're doing something for the environment because we're essentially recycling an old device that might otherwise end up in the trash. So if you're interested in getting such a device, I'll definitely link it in the video description. And then I would say, let's move on to the operating system. This time I have decided for a change not to go with a regular Linux with added containers, but instead I thought we could try to set it up as graphically as possible while also providing the ability to run many different systems on it, since we already have quite a bit of performance available. Accordingly, this time I chose Proxmox, with which you can theoretically run Windows, Linux, Home Assistant, and many other systems. The installation is relatively simple. We simply download the ISO file from the website and flash it onto a USB stick using Balena Etcher. We insert the USB stick into the server, start it, go into the BIOS beforehand, enable, virtualization, and then we can boot from the USB stick. After that, you are greeted with a graphical menu and can simply click through the installation. At the end of the installation, simply unplug the USB stick and an IP address should be displayed, which we can connect to and thus start the setup directly from another computer. After that, we need to click away this ugly message and click on my computer under repositories, then deactivate this and this repository here. And in the second step, click on add, okay? Non-subscription, add, and add this one again. After that, you can press updates, refresh, and then upgrade to install these packages. Then you are up to date and now we just need to install Home Assistant OS on it. The whole process is relatively simple. For this, there is this prepared page. Here we select Home Assistant and Home Assistant OS. Copy the script, go to this computer, then to Shell, right click, paste, press Enter, and Home Assistant OS will be set up automatically. Yes, we want to install everything with default settings. And now, the um, latest Home Assistant OS is being downloaded. So after a few minutes, it will be ready. As you can see, all green check marks. So it worked accordingly. And we have our Home Assistant OS running here. We can now look into the console and see how it is booting up in parallel. And subsequently, we get an IP address displayed, which we could use to complete the setup of Home Assistant. 
The advantage of this method is that we can now select any other system from the list or set up a completely new VM on Proxmox, for example with Windows, Linux or any other operating systems. We could also install an extremely large hard drive in it and use the whole setup as a NAS for example. And what I naturally forgot to mention, whoop, if you feel like it, it's also possible to partially open up these whoop, thin clients and install expansion cards accordingly. Some, for example, have a 2.5 gigabit connection installed instead of an NVMe SSD. You can also partially install a second SATA SSD, for example, and thus extract quite a bit of performance from these small devices. Above all, they are certainly worthwhile in conjunction with Proxmox because Proxmox also supports virtualization. So if you want to have a redundant smart home, you could start the whole thing this way, set it up at home and deploy several of these systems, which can then, in the worst case, move all the VMs from A to B and thus allow for an almost fail-safe smart home. If you want to see more about this, feel free to write it in the comments. I would definitely recommend you to take a look at the whole thing. They are really so attractively priced that it's extremely worthwhile to just start with them. Also, just to gain a bit of networking experience and maybe just to play around with backup options. Otherwise, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe even found it helpful. If so, I would of course be very happy about a rating. I will put all the links to everything I presented in this video in the video description below and then we'll see each other again in the next video. Until then, take care and goodbye.